Hey guys, I'm Heather Darnall and welcome back to my art channel. So the last piece I did was my traditional brush stroke and today I just wanted to change it up a little bit and have some fun and some fluid art and just do a simple and fun little ring pour. Um, great for, re for beginners by the way, but before I get started, um, the Bible verse I wanted to share with you comes from the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 and it reads, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Oh my goodness, you guys. For me, that is one of the biggest ways to convict me um, in such a small way, in so little words, in other words. Um, yeah, I just really, it's such a reminder that all of us sin. All of us fall short. All of us wear filthy rags of sin in front of Jesus. And we all need that conviction. So thankfully... The Holy Spirit is inside me to convict me when I realize I'm doing wrong. And I do wrong every day, guys. I'm not better than anybody else, just like nobody else is better than me. We are all sinners. We all carry around bags of garbage. We just have different contents in our garbage bag, but they all stink the same. So we, reach, we need to realize that, that even those who go to church and act like they're all goody two-shoes, Clearly, they're still struggling when they come out of church and are still just as self-righteous before as before they walked in. Um, but at least they're at church and they're realizing they need help. Which, if you think about it, churches are merely a hospital for broken souls. They're seeking God's help. They're seeking God's forgiveness. And just because they struggle the second they walk out again doesn't mean that they're not you know, at least trying to do something about it. Just like a person that we see at the gym who's clearly out of shape you know, and we tend to look at them right away and be like, what, what, is they, what are they doing? Is they, you know, we want to judge them on their overall or outer appearance. Um, and we want to continue to judge them when they get in the car and they, you know, start opening a bag of chips and start feeding themselves, feeding themselves the food that puts them to the gym to begin with. Clearly, they're still struggling too. Only this, they're struggling with gluttony. So the two are still struggling with, but they're, even though they're different, they're still struggling just like you and I struggle with different things. Again, hence the different contents in our bag of garbage. So instead of focusing on everybody else's wrongdoing, little or big, you know, hardly ever or all the time, that's not for us to judge anybody. We have no authority or position to do so. The only thing Christ wants us to do is to be compassionate and forgiving the way he is for us when we wrongdo him. All right, guys, I know, again, isn't that crazy? Isn't that a mouthful? But don't forget, too, that just because you see, you know, um, places in the Bible that it convicts you, it's not to make you feel guilty. It's not to make you walk around like Eeyore. The Bible is to give you hope and to know that God loves you unconditionally, even when you fall short, even when you are acting self-righteous, even when you're having too much to eat, even when you're being judgmental, even when you steal from someone or do a little, say a little white lie. Again, they're all the same. We are all forgiven the same too when we ask God for his forgiveness. Oh my goodness gracious. My puppy is just wandering around here. <laughs> so I'm going to go attend to her and get started on this painting. Good morning, everyone. All right. So before I get started, I wanted to let you know that um, my inspiration for this project came from a a woman named Catherine Beals. Um, I hope I'm saying her last name right, but anyway, so she has like um, a bunch of projects or a series of projects that are like, they look like they're pretty much um, in ring pour style. And then she does some brushstroke artwork on top of it that are like landscaping type of details, like trees and shrubs and stuff. And so I just thought, how beautiful. And I wanted to give that a try. So. What I'm gonna do is do is try to make like nighttime colors. And um, so, but I wanted a little bit of like, I don't know, like ref reflection type colors in there. Um, hence the lighter tinted blues, but again, mostly dark here or darker colors. So I'm going to use an iridescent graphite, a Prussian blue hue, an iridescent blue that's called fairy tale blue, cobalt blue hue, and a blissful blue, which has like a little great undertone, which is kind of perfect because I think it would complement the iridescent graphite here. And I'm trying to do alternating colors, like, you know, dark light, dark 
light. Obviously this is a dark and dark together, so we'll see how it goes. But again, I wanted mostly darker colors to reflect a more nighttime um, theme. So the consistency that you should see for um, the paint to do this project, it should be on the thicker side. I would say like kind of like a soft mound on a mound. So I'll go ahead and show you that. And I, I apologize in advance if I can't really give you a good example. Hey, you know what? This is really horrible with the darker color should be. Oh, let's do, I can't make up my mind, just pick one. <laughs> okay, so let's just do this little iridescent blue here. And you should see like a soft mound on a mound type thing. So um, the reason for that, if the thicker it is, and you don't want it peanut butter thick, peanut butter thick by all means, um, you do need to have it thin down just a tidbit so that obviously it'll flow easily and, um, but be thick enough that it will retain its shape once you pour it and layer it in the cup. I'm a little worried about this blissful blue because it's a little thinner and it's, this was the only craft paint in here and craft paints are typically thinner anyways. And when I was pouring my pouring medium, which I thought I would give this one a try, um, I didn't realize, well, that's really thin too. And so between that and a thin paint, I thought, oh man, I wasn't really paying attention to how much I put in this one. So I think that's what just kind of even made it thinner. I didn't want to put more paint in because again, that's already a thin paint. I don't want to try to make more paint of the color I don't really want or use in a lot of projects. So again, we'll just see how that one reacts. Um, I am, this is a new pouring medium for me. I've never used this before and I just got a small bottle. I just want to try it out. As you can see, it's like, I don't know, to me, it looks like a, uh, it's very low viscosity, so it's super thin and it looks like like a milky substance. And for me as a former beekeeper, I'm like, this looks like royal jelly. <laughs> so if any of you uh, people out there are beekeepers yourselves or have beekeeped before, or even just saw royal jelly, I think you would agree. But anyways, okay, so enough yabby yabby yabby. Let me go ahead and push these off here and go ahead and get the canvas so we can get started. Okay, actually, this is so, I, mean, I feel so silly, you guys. <laughs> I always feel like I skip a big step, which is pouring the paint in the cup. I get so excited and I just feel like I skip steps. So anyways, this is kind of important. I got to pour the paint in the cup. I could do that, but I don't want it to put all that weight on the canvas and sink it in. So I just, it's just better to just do it on the table right here. So I'm going to go ahead and layer these in and I'm not really measuring, just kind of like eyeballing it in there, maybe doing like a one 1000 count but I'm going to measure it in to the side here, like so, and it's hopefully this is enough. I would say this is about roughly six, five to six ounces of paint. So one, two, three, four, five, six, there, yeah, so it should almost fill this up. Don't ask me any more math questions because I am i won't tell you how far I went in school with that. It's quite embarrassing. Okay, well, there we go. So iridescent graphite, Christian blue hue, okay, again here's this fairy tale blue, this, it's a really pretty color, I think Arteza, Arteza, whatever, that's what it's by, or who it's by, I think they make some really pretty colors. The rest of these are by Liquitex Basics, and then this is a cobalt blue hue. And then of course this blissful blue. These silicone cups are so flimsy sometimes it makes it hard to grip, but I feel like they're a little bit better for the economy as far as being able to rinse out and just reuse. So I kind of leave a smaller footprint doing such projects. Alrighty, so let me go ahead and just fast forward here and put the rest of these paints in. Okay, so here we go. See how pretty. 
the rings retained their shape and it looks like the blissful blue, blissful blue was at a decent consistency. I was, a, I was afraid it was gonna sink, but so. Okay, now that I've poured these in, I can put it off to the side to get the canvas out. So let's do that. All right, so here I have a 14 by 14 um, canvas, a little level one by Artist Loft. Came in like a pack of five for a pretty good deal at Michael's. So I thought, oh, I'll just get these. And um, I taped my back here too. I always try to make a habit of doing so just to keep the back looking cleaner. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You know, no one's looking at the back anyway, but if you do sell your work or you gift it, it does make it look a little cleaner. So that is the reason for that. Okay, so let's get started here. I'm just going to, ooh, made a big mess on my hands here. Okay, so anyway, I'm just gonna start pouring in the center, just ring style, nothing difficult. This, by the way, projects like these are super easy and ideal for beginners. and I probably made too much paint, <laughs> but that's okay. I could just go grab a smaller canvas and make, you know, do a um, smaller version. Ooh, stay in the middle, stay in the middle. What pretty colors, oh my goodness. I'm not being too careful right here, like being really steady, making my circles perfect, but whatever, I'm not really going for that. I kind of want it to look kind of imperfect. You know what I mean? Let's see here, I think it's staying in the middle. All right. I keep thinking to myself, okay, how much more should I go? How much more should I do? <laughs> I think this will be good here. So let me just do that. Always try to take your finger and put it at the spout so that when you are done pouring, you don't have this big blob just kind of go right in the middle and, you know, distort your composition. Ooh, what is that? Okay, I'm going to get that off. Said, I know I said imperfect, but I don't want like, you know, too much of funkiness. All right, let's get that off. All right, here we go. Really pretty. Okay, I am dumping quite a bit. I'm okay with that because I really do think I dumped a little bit too much on here. It looks like that graphite kind of made it um, have some green effects. And I think I'm going to keep that off-centered a little bit. good. See? Easy peasy, guys. Okay. Let me just touch up the sides here. Like so. Don't worry if you don't get, you know, every corner perfectly, because the nice thing about that is, or, yeah, the nice thing about that is you just have to touch it up with your fingers, because you have enough, you know, even if you don't have any on your fingers, you know, you can always just use the residual paint that dripped off and you just go back and just touch it with your fingers there. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. That's really pretty. Um, I'm just hoping because my intent is to paint gold trees. And so I'm hoping that this isn't, I hope I didn't dump off um, too much dark, uh, too much of the darker colors. 
but overall still I really like it so far so let me just wipe my hands off get the torch and the good news is I don't see a whole lot of cells popping up which is good because I don't it's green pores shouldn't really have a whole lot of cells um and I did use glue all as part of my pouring medium which isn't technically a pouring medium but it does kind of help prevent making sounds whereas flow troll is you know that reputation the flow troll's reputation is you know good for making cells all right let's go <laughs> my goodness i had a lot of air bubbles i don't know if you can see all those little specks oh my I usually don't torch that much, but that was a lot of bubbles popping. And what's crazy is I pre-mixed these paints last night. And usually when you let your paint sit overnight, you know, the bubbles come to the surface. So, you know, your paint um, doesn't have so many bubbles when you torch it. You know, you're not really going to get much, but huh. Anyways, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I'm just glad I got the bubbles out because that's going to help my composition uh, level out and stay even. And now I'm thinking, looking at it, I wonder if these little bubbles that did pop from the torch, I wonder if they will reflect a lighter color and maybe serve as some, like, you know, looking like stars or something, since I wanted this to be a night sky. All right, so let me go ahead and take you down for a close-up. All right, guys, here we are. Down for the close-up. Try to bring you in without touching my canvas. Sometimes it's really hard to tell, but here we are. Look at all those bubbles that popped. <laughs> but I love the colors. Really pretty. I think here, I'm not crazy about that center. No big deal though, but not my favorite part. And I think here, like I said earlier, that the graphite muddied a little bit with the um, Prussian blue. That's okay, and kind of gave a green tint. So I, I forgot to tell you earlier too, so when doing ring pours and you're layering your colors, just be mindful of how you pair them or neighbor them because they could muddy and make a different tint. So obviously if you're gonna do red and white next to each other, just consider that you're probably going to get pink. Or if you're gonna do black and yellow next together, they could, you know, make a green color or tint. So just things to think about. But overall, I really do like it. They retained their shape really, really nicely. And it did give off that kind of reflection of, you know, a glowing or illuminated sky from like the moon or something. So I'm going in on a turn. I feel like I'm driving a car here. I'm just turning my phone. And all different angles and stuff. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Let me pull this out for an overview and just stay tuned for the dried results. All right, guys, here I have the dried result and it is so beautiful. I absolutely love all the blue shades that I picked out. Even the iridescent graphite, I think, was a great complementary color to keep the nighttime theme looking dark or on the darker side. So, again, I'm loving the composition minus the center portion here, which, again, I'll paint over that. But overall, really love it. But I wanted to show you guys a couple of things. I'll bring you down for a close-up to talk to you about, which are these little divots and things, which are, of course, the air bubbles that popped. And my goodness, talk about the large quantity of bubbles that I had was insane. But anyways, had I used Flow Troll, they would have been totally gone and leveled out because that's what Flow Troll is. It's a paint conditioner that helps with self-leveling for those who are not familiar with it. But that's okay. And it also dries with a matte finish if you use a Flow Troll. I didn't want a matte finish. I want a gloss finish. 
which I also think that I got from using the pouring medium that I chose. So I am happy about that because I think it did give a good gloss finish to it. So, but um, looking back at the video, I was trying to see how I was achieving those details and this one right here, I think it's kind of cool, but my thumb was right there. That's why I was, that little one came about, which again, no complaints. And I also made a little mini me version here. You guys remember I said, I think I made too much paint and I did, um, but I had a little five by seven on standby and I'm so glad I used it because I mean, I love this composition too. Talk about how different they are. Same batch of paint, but look how different. And they're both super cool. I love them. I don't even know which one I like better, to be honest. Um, but I'm so glad I had this little canvas on standby because you guys, if you make too much paint, you know, have a small canvas on standby. Make a mini me version. They're great for gifts, you know, or just have, make sure you have a project in mind in the near future to use those paints. Paint pouring doesn't have to be wasteful. You know, and I think a lot of, too many people think that it is, but if you plan accordingly and have all the supplies, you know, you're really going to make out with all the cool things you can make. Alrighty, again here, just a recap of all the pretty details. Loving it. And I'll even bring you a close-up in for a close-up on the little mini-me portion. I know, it's a shame that muddied there, but that's okay. And then this one here, the light's not being an issue by reflecting it, but look at that. So pretty. I think that right there is my favorite part of this. Let me turn it this way because that reflection is... All right, guys, so now I'm going to go ahead and paint in my golden trees. That part I will do via a voiceover, but when I am done, I will go over the um, finished product with you. So stand by for that. Okay, the next step is obviously painting the trees in, which is what I'm doing here using my number three round brush with an iridescent, rich, precious gold, painting in soft vertical lines that would not only serve as the trunks, but the tree's placement as well. Next, I'm using my small fan brush to create the leaves and branches, just doing horizontal brush strokes going back and forth, sort of in a jagged motion. I leave the tops alone because I'll go back to those later. Now I'm filling in the tops with my number three round brush again, just going from wide to narrow from where I started the trees. I left some of the trees bare at the bottom, still deciding if I want to fill them in all the way at the bottom. So I filled all the trees out. I think it looks better now. And so now I'm using a mandala dotting tool to make dots that would serve as golden stars, I guess, so it will complement and or balance out the gold trees. Alrighty, so here's the finished product. 
Man, it is so beautiful. At least I think so. The gloss varnish totally made the colors pop, even more than what the pouring medium put out. And the gold is such a nice contrast, especially when the light hits it. This is such a cool fluid landscape. I'd love to do another one in the near future. And the nice thing is these aren't that difficult to do. I mean, it's like a twofer doing a project like this. You get experience in both fluid art and traditional brushstroke and neither are hard. So combined, it's a great project for beginners. Anyway, that concludes this lesson. And if you liked the tutorial, please be sure to not only share it, but to also hit like and subscribe for more videos. Also feel free to tell me what you think about it. I'd love to hear from you. But more importantly, remember to thank God for this opportunity and always paint from the soul.